there truly is an AI rush right now where people are scrambling to come up with new tools to utilize the technology or enhance existing tools and come up with new functionality. So with that, this is the first in a new series where I take a look at AI and immersive tools and try and come up with some sort of product or service or website enhancement uh, and take you along for the ride with me. I'll show you my process so you can implement this stuff yourself, whether that be in Webflow or provide you with some marginal entertainment as I fail miserably. Let's jump into this. ChatGPT, soon to be version 4 at the time of writing this, was built by a company called OpenAI who has made a plethora of AI applications including Dali and what was the other one? Whisper. They've been really leading the charge in all this AI stuff by providing a APIs that you can then access and build into your systems. Natural Language Processing or NLP has been around for nearly 70 years and it's only just getting to a point where nuance, spelling, grammar and how we like to, everyone likes to phrase things a little bit differently is becoming something that, that it can handle very very well. God you remember those voicemails on your phone where it would transfer the voicemail to a text it would send you like a text or something or even to this day voice automated systems on things like uh, say yes to confirm or it still don't work it really is a difficult task. NLP is broken up into a few categories. You've got speech recognition, which is speech to text, converting your speech into text. Part of speech tagging or grammatical tagging is determining which part of the text provides the context. Word sense disambiguation, which takes words that have multiple meanings and decides which, which one it is basically based on the context. Name entity recognition or NEM identifies the most useful words in a sentence. Co-reference resolution, which is identifying whether two words mean the same thing, such as she referring to a previously mentioned Mary. Sentiment analysis identifies the subjective qualities of a piece of text. And finally, natural language generation, which is basically making a computer sound like a human. So without this becoming an essay on NLP, you can start to see how complex all of this stuff is. So getting back to the point, I love how we can take natural language, how people like to phrase things and distill that into something that is legible and understandable and then respond to that in something that they then can understand. It's like the ultimate translation tool. So wanting to use ChatGPT on my website, I found a tool called AnyWebsite. And AnyWebsite is a paid for service where it scrapes all of the content of your website and provides that into a language model for ChatGPT uh, to understand and basically create a chatbot for your website. But my goal was to take this a, a step further because I thought it could be a really interesting way to navigate a website by instead of kind of having menus and links how about just have them lead the charge uh, and type questions and ask things in the way that they feel comfortable and and, and and say it in a way that they understand and then get a response for that enough ramble let's dive into the code and explain and understand what exactly that i've done so here we have any websites uh website here and you can literally get started uh right here in the on the website now you obviously can see that they've got a lot of traffic going on at the moment in normal circumstances you'll be able to put your website domain here and it'll generate a chatbot to you and then you can have it there's a little bit of a playground and if you like what you see you can sign up you can pay and there is a beta 50 code at the moment for 50 percent off so do make the most of that once you sign up and once you pay your basically go through to your dashboard here you see the logs that are coming in and I think this is great just to see what information is missing what people are asking uh, and then you can provide more content and to do that you go into your website's page here and you can see all this stuff but inside of here you can see all the information that's been scraped from your website and you're able to actually edit that information and add new information and obviously delete stuff and all the rest of it so this is really great to get this code working uh, you can see here we've got a get code sample here see you can scrape again do not want to be doing that it's a very dangerous thing to do because I've edited the information if it was to scrape it again that information won't be present on my website so here is the documentation I've already fed back that the documentation could be a bit better to um, play with it but ultimately if you just want to use it straight out of the box 
just copy this code into the head of your Webflow website. What you want to do is copy this, all of this in the HTML here. Save. And we should get our little chatbot in the corner there. We have our chatbot working. As I say, I wanted to incorporate this in a slight different way. And you can do that by basically setting the frame mode to true. And already what this is going to do is remove that little that little bubble there. And it's just going to put it onto the page. What you can also do is specify a div with an ID of chatbot wherever you want to put that. So if we jump into the Jupyter in the Draft website here, yes, it's built in PineGrow, of course. I have a modal here that I've built, and I have a div with uh, the ID of chatbot inside of that modal. Now this modal is going, let's go into the live website here. I'm triggering the, the visibility of this modal using a button that I've put on the page. So I show that and it's already loaded and this is that div with the ID of chatbot. So that's the basic implementation of you adding the chatbot if you want it just to appear at the bottom right like any other normal chatbot or if you want to integrate it in your own unique way. Now what I then did was I went the stuff that I wanted to change the styling of you can see the original styling here if I open this up you've got a purple button here uh, the white background blue thing all I wanted to all I did was if I inspect the code here and find my element so I've got that any CB pop-up header there's the class there that I want to target now if you want to be super specific I would recommend taking this selector here copying that and then overriding selector inside of your CSS so here I just did display none for that header at the top there and you can see then that's display none uh, going back into this let's have a little look at this background background color is set on this selector so I can go through beautiful absolutely beautiful so you can see how you can start to change the styling and all the rest of it from this perspective also you can see that we've got some other settings here the width and the height this should make sense and this should be in a string just to let you know uh, but you can also change the hello message on the website so if we go down to here uh, refresh my page then I've set this one to talk nerdy to me look forward to seeing how this evolves with uh, settings as well so Jupyter the Draft is a company that builds websites for immersive entertainment and uh, immersive technologies and we did an audio experience. We have an audio experience on our website where you can navigate around, you've got a bit of audio going on. I wanted an audio experience for this pop-up here so when you go into AI mode you get this kind of ethereal kind of soundtrack to being in the AI and then when you come out of that it just goes back to our normal audio. So that's kind of how I implemented the, do that. Uh, so that's kind of how I took the AI chatbot and made it a primary navigation of our website. I'm really, really happy with the result. I've got to work on the language model now, basically, to say, uh, oh, we have personal. Do you know what? I literally sent him a, a request about 15 minutes ago and it's already online. I said a personality would be absolutely amazing. And and he's literally done exactly what I want. That's amazing. Thank you, Clement. That was cool. That is cool. So I requested that it should talk in first or third person. And I want it to have a little bit of a personality. So I'm getting sidetracked. That threw me for six, that one. But that's pretty cool. So uh, I don't, don't even know where we were. Oh, yes. So the... The language model is being worked on. I'm actually learning from what people are typing in so that I can add the information later on. It is a bit jarring, there's a bit of a learning curve to it, but I think the more information you have, the more detail you have on your website originally will make for a much better experience. So one thing I've been doing is editing the content of my home page and being very, very specific about the sorts of questions people are asking and the sorts of responses that I would like to to give. Take for example, a lot of people are asking about price and we don't put the prices of our websites on 
our website. I've kind of bulked in a bunch of questions and the way people ask it and, and various things like that, as well as a sort of generic response that I'd want. And then ChatGPT formulates that and presents it back in a manner which takes into account how the, the user has asked, uh, what the context is, what they might have asked before that or whatever. So again, what I'd suggest is piping pumping as much information as you possibly can into the data models. I think the real power of this tool comes from if you have a blog. If a user was to ask how a website should be built or uh, tips to improve something or where's the best place for this or whatever it is, the information is on a blog that you are, it's public information that you're putting out there. Your chatbot can also be the source of really useful information uh, right there in the chat experience. So if you've got a blog, if you're adding more information in the uh, in the language model, then I think you're onto a really, really powerful website assistant over actually just generally being a chatbot. I hope that was interesting and I hope that was helpful. A friend rightly said, I'm trying to introduce a new paradigm here of interacting with a website. So I look forward to seeing how people use it and if I can improve it in any way, basically. And finally, I hope you have learned a little bit about how to incorporate any website into your website. So like, subscribe, all the rest of it. So with that being said, I'll see you in the next one.